All right, so we, we are taking a short period just to uh, have a conversation around pathfindering and the real things that pathfinders go through. And here in this panel, I have a whole range of young men and women who are going to help us have that conversation. I know some of us are adventurers, but soon to be pathfinders. But I know most of the people here also um, have either passed through Pathfinder or they are Pathfinders. So I want you to be keen. And if you have any question, if you might have some time, you might toss that question to us and then our panelists can respond to that. Just before we start, I'd like to welcome uh, Mabel to offer a word of prayer before we start. So boys, if you have your cups on, please remove them so that we can offer a word of prayer. Our dear and heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the gift of life you've given us. Thank you that all these people are able to make it back this afternoon. And as we are about to begin our discussion, please may you fill us with your spirit. May you give us clarity of thought. And may we be able to reach out to the audience. For it is in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Mabel. I think the first thing that we'll start with will be to know who these are. Uh, so this is how I would like you to do it. I'd like you to tell us your name. You can tell us both of your names, yours and your family name, surname. And then I would like you, I'd like you to also go ahead as you introduce yourselves to tell us something unique about yourself. Uh, your friends could be knowing you, but I'd like you to tell us something so unique about yourself, probably that they do not know. I'll put you on the spot, I know, but let's do it. I'll start with George, he's more confident, and then the rest can follow the queue. Uh, happy Sabbath. <coughs> happy day. Uh, for those who have not heard, my name is George Sumbwa, and something unique about myself is not many people know that I love to read. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. You love to read. Uh, next. Happy Sabbath, Church. Happy day. Happy day. Happy, Happy Sabbath. My name is Dylan Yachai. The surname for our family is Bundi. Something people don't know about me is that I'm work, hardworking in my own ways, even though you can never find me doing something <laughs> good. <laughs> even your mom doesn't know that you're hardworking. All right, thank you so much. We'll come to this side. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. Happy Sabbath. My name is Hope Ogeto, and something unique about me is that I'm a very friendly and open person. <laughs> All right. She is friendly. Thank you. Next. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Happy day. My name is Lily Grace Colanyo. Lily Grace is one name. Anyway, um, one thing that's unique about me is I'm really confident and vocal. <laughs> right. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. My name is Mabel Ombati and... Something unique about me is I'm a dancer. I like dancing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did. I actually couldn't even tell about that. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for sharing your lives with us. Um, now, some of you have been here long enough. Some of, some of you have been here short enough. I'd like you to tell us. And the church, how long have you been in Lovington Church? Did you start as an adventurer here in Lovington Church, or you came from another church to come to, to... Can you remember the years when you started coming here? Dylan, you can start, now that you're the youngest. I remember coming here when I was two. I've been here for 10 years, and also as a participant in the children's choir. I started wow. as a little lamb, and now I'm in companion class. Wow, what do we say to this gentleman? Yeah. Two years old, he's still holding. And you've been baptized in this church, isn't it? That's something really amazing, all right? I'll come to the ladies so that I can come to judge later. So I'll start with Hope. Okay. Um, I've been here since November 2021, so just about around three years. I started in new life as, I think, Little Lamp as well. And now I'm finishing Pathfinder. I'm in guide class. Amen. That's really amazing. Okay, Lily? Um, I started in late 2015. I started Adventures, the first class, yeah, and now I'm in Voyager. Okay, Mabel? I came to Lovington in 2014, 
And I started as an eager beaver in Adventurers, and now I'm in guide in Pathfinders. That's great. And George? Uh, I came around 2016, 2017. I started in Busy Bee, and now I'm in Ranger. I mean, to, to see these guys having taken their journey in this very church, people like Dylan, who started from even before the club started, and they are still holding on in church, is something amazing that we need to thank God for. And um, I'll probably like to ask them if they like to share a memory verse. When I was asking them, they told me, we have many of them. Dylan was telling me, I can't choose, but let me hear if you guys have that verse that speaks to you very, very individually and a message that you like to pass to us. Okay, I start with George. Um, even if it's short, it touches me because every time I think of it, it is just amazing. It is John 11:35. Jesus wept. And because uh, Jesus cried, I see that he relates with me as a human being because sometimes I also feel down. Amen. Amen. Okay, Dylan. Well, as for me, it is Psalms chapter 77, verse 13. And it says, Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary, who is a greater God than our God. It reminds me that whenever I am tempted to do something bad, I can relate to it and know that Jesus, if his way is in the sanctuary, I can follow him and he lead me to do what is right. Amen. 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 Thank you. Next is hope. Okay. Mine is Mark 8:36 and it says, "For what shall it profit a man if he gains earthly things yet loses his soul?" It reminds me to always be in touch with what God meant for us and that's our soul and spreading his gospel and not letting earthly pleasures come between my relationship with God. Great. That's really good. Yeah. Lily Mine is Jeremiah 29, 11, and it says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and to not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This speaks to me because um, as a teenager, I, like, I just want my way and my way only. So God has a way for me, and his way is to prosper and not to harm me, and sometimes I may forget that. So, yeah. Thank you. Amen. Mine is Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 14. And it's when Moses was speaking to the Israelites, and it says, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, he, or which he will accomplish for you today. The Egyptians that you see today, you will not see ever, forever. And stand still in God, because he will fight for you, and he will give you peace. So this encouraged me, because I feel like the Egyptians of that day are symbolical for the struggles we have today. For example, school, work, bullies, or assignments. So it, this verse encourages me because God assures us that he will be with us and he will deliver us and he will take away the Egyptians in our lives. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, these are real people and we're here to talk about real issues, both in church and real issues out there in their schooling mostly because that's where they spend most of their, their, their time. I'd like to ask a very pertinent question to these guys and this question is related to their friends. As Pathfinders, sometimes you, because of your uniqueness, you find a lot of pressure both within the church and outside it. When I was asking, you guys told me there is something we call positive peer influence. So, in other words, people can actually influence each other positively to do right things. But I'm also cognizant of the fact that there can be negative influence. So I'd like you to, to tell the congregation how you deal with peer pressure and are there strategies that you like to give to People your age, how, can, how they can deal with negative influence, how you've dealt with it, and how did you overcome, all right? So, Dylan, I'm going to start with you. Is there any influence that you've, um, that you've gone through? Can you please tell us? 
I have gone through negative okay. peer pressure. Okay. First of all, if you ever land in negative peer pressure, think through it. Do not say, because these guys are going out, let me just follow them. You can't think for yourself. You're letting other people think for you. So first of all, you have to know the side effects because every decision has a consequence. So for this negative peer pressure, I had to think it through and see its effects. So after I thought it through, I have to check the consequences that will benefit me. So, and that's what I go for. All right. Oh, thank you. So think through, think through an action. Uh, will, you, will you say that because of your connection with God, he led you by his spirit to think through? What will you say, uh, Dylan? Well, according to the scriptures, you can refer to them to help you when it comes to negative peer pressure. And also, among a group that is influencing you to do bad, there may be one or two people who might be supporting you, and most of you make that decision to leave it. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Lily, what will you have to say? Um, I would say um, negative peer pressure, how to deal with it, is um, sticking to your morals and knowing your worth. If you stick to something that your parents have said or guardians or anyone have said, you will not like turn from it like Proverbs 22, 6 says. Because when you train up a child, they can't turn for it. And knowing your worth is realizing that that is not something the future you would be happy about that you did. And that's how I like turn to negative peer influence. Thank you. Uh, Hope? Um, what helps me with dealing with negative peer pressure is just remembering that at the, at the end of the day, you came into this world alone and you live alone. Mm -hmm. As someone who has a twin personally, I know that like, um, you can always be like, oh, but you have your sister, you have your sister, but at the end of the day, it's going to be you alone and you alone only. You might get caught and the other people won't get caught, so you just need to remember that whatever you, they do doesn't affect what you will do. And as Dylan had said, the consequences will come, and the consequences will come and face you only. All right. That's a really good thought, that it is you. Even judgment, it's you personally. Uh, George? Uh, pressure, peer pressure is external pressure that influences a decision. So sometimes it can be positive or negative. And most of the time, peer pressure can happen small then get to bigger things. If your friend tells you, uh, let's go to the washroom together, he's pressured you into going to the washroom with him. Or if your friend tells you, let's study together, he's pressured you into studying. So peer pressure goes both ways, and most of the time it's positive, as I try to stay away from negative peer pressure as much as possible. Okay, thank you. And Mabel? Well, the advice I have on how to overcome peer, negative peer pressure is, like Lily says, you should know your values. So you should set down very firm boundaries as to who you are and like what you believe in. So that if your friends come and start saying, oh, let's do that, let's do this, if they don't, fall, uh, if they don't align with the boundaries you've set in place, you should pray for strength to be able to reject the pressure and follow the path you want for yourself. Yeah. Right, thank you. Uh, guys, I'd like you to tell me, give me examples, because I need, I need to come to your age and see what are some of the real temptations that come, that come to, to, to you guys. There might not be temptations for the adventurers, there might not be temptations for the older people, but you, uh, according to your age set, what are some of the real, real temptations that come to you? Can I start with you, Hope? If you're not ready, you can let me know. I can, I can, I can start with another person and come back to you. Um, one of the p negative peer pressures you ca I can have is maybe when your friends are like going out and they'd want to do like things that you know wouldn't be acceptable, like in the SD community. Like let's say they want to like drink or like they want to like um, maybe like get a tattoo or something that you know is not in the SD community and that would not be accepted in your church. Okay, so I've picked two, two or three things. Um, getting into drinking, uh, tattooing, and things like that, isn't it? Okay, Dylan. 
some things that you can get into on your friends or the people around you do a specific thing because nowadays we're all into music and music moves the flesh mm -hmm. so your friends listening to that one song you know very well is not godly okay but you in your right senses go to listen to that song okay. and later on it's not like you listen to it and it ends there your flesh wants more of it so you start singing it in class and it destroys your concentration and everything else about you. Okay. So you so become a different person. So it's about music and its influence to us. Yes. Okay. Thank you. George? Um, <clears throat> the pressure to play games and not study is a very heavy one. And also a common one with everyone is a distraction that we all don't want to admit called social media. It is very major in today's society. And it's hard to contain yourself because the dopamine in your mind will want you to keep scrolling to the next one, keep reading the articles, and keep going. Okay. We, we will come back to social media. Thank you for flagging it up. I have it in my notes at some point. Mabel, uh, which one uh, comes at the top of your mind? Um, I was also going to bring up social media okay. and scrolling and how it's destructive to okay. like productivity. Yeah, uh, like, okay. for example, if you have homework and then you go home and you're like, oh, let me scroll for five minutes, that's a lie. You'll end up scrolling for, like, two hours. You wouldn't have been productive. You wouldn't have gained anything. Yeah. Okay. Social media is very major in this. Okay, let me hear Lily. Um, mine is to add on to social media. It's okay. trying to live up to the standard of the social media world. Okay. Like, that's really negative because you're like, oh, like how she doesn't go to church on Saturday, she parties on Saturday, she does this on a Saturday, and in your head, that's a standard you would want to live up to. So yeah, I think that's like... Right, so, um, let's crack this. So, social media is out there, it can be used both for good and for bad. Uh, another dimension will be the regulation. Because of your age, you might not have the self-regulation of an adult mind to know that if you have 30 minutes, you're, you're dropping at 30 minutes and going to do something else. And so I see a conglomerate of so many things around social media, but I'd like to ask you, um, how have you learned to deal with it? How have you learned to deal with social media? But I'd like you to tell also us, which are those sites? Which are those social media specific sites that you're talking about, which are quite an influence to, to us, so that we can know, we can know them. Uh, Dylan, do you know any? Okay, can you, can you start, please? So when it comes to social media, there are two pers perspectives in these, either positively or negatively. According to me, I take social media positively. I don't use it in a bad way, but I use it to help me and give me some benefit. Okay. Okay, George, uh, can you give us examples, very specific examples of the apps that we have in your generation? Um, <clears throat> let me just be uh, plain and clear. There's Instagram where people talk a lot. There's Facebook where adults like to scroll. <laughs> there is Twitter where adults like to scroll. There's also Snapchat and many others that usually distract us but they all have the, they have the same thing in common. You can watch videos on them and you can talk to people. Okay, yeah, any other that he's left out that, that you guys know? Is there? TikTok. Yeah, TikTok, there is any other that we've forgotten about? Uh, I hear another one from the floor. Which one is that? X, which is Twitter, okay. Any other? Um, Roblox. All right, so uh, you want us to rope in even uh, on online gaming, which is part of the distraction that you're talking about. So let's address this. It does not only affect this, but also the children that are sat in front of us. Because we need to come out of this conversation with something, even if it is one or two things that can help in managing, because the reality is we are in this information age. And we need to help these children so that they can navigate safely, number one, because I think the first thing is safely, and then number two, with self-regulation. 
So is there anything, is there a mechanism that you guys have put in place to help you navigate through social media? Hope. Okay. Um, me personally, my phone is taken away during school days to ensure that I focus on school when I need to. But in case I do have my phone and I still have work to do, I always try and put like a time on it or a limit. Or I try to tell myself that for every minute of work I do, I get two times of that on like online. So for example, if I do 30 minutes of homework, I get an hour of scrolling. Um, also, maybe like making your algorithm more like godly. So an algorithm is basically like what comes up on your feed. It could either be negative or positive. So trying to like like or comment on things that like are positive is what I like to do. Right. So let me break down to what you've said. So you've said about um, absconding or doing away with the phone because it, it will obviously be a distraction during the, the school week. You've also said about when you're using it, there's a timer. And then number three, what else did you say? Uh, yeah, the, the feed that you give it. Because if you're liking, if you're liking the, the, the dancers, that's what will always be popping up. Okay? So three things that we've noted. Let me hear Lily. Um, this one I picked up for my dad. He deactivates his account. So after once in a while, he'll stop using Facebook for three months. Sometimes it doesn't last long, but sometimes it does. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's a detox. Of, it's yeah. A detox of so he'll be like, ah, I'm getting off Facebook for three months. It would last one week. But yeah, I, I get his point. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Right. So that's what I've picked up to deactivate and to like leave social media for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the influence is not only to the younger ones, even to us adults. It is very real. Okay, Mabel? Um, I feel like discipline is important. Yeah. Um, let's say you have assignments or work. It wouldn't be very wise to start by scrolling or start going on social media because it's like an endless loop. You don't know how long you're going to get stuck there for. Yet you have a life here with things that you have to do. So maybe delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. Like do your work first the hard things, and then when you're done with your work, maybe go on social media, and you just need to develop discipline, because it's not easy. Yeah, Yeah, that, that's good. I, yeah, George. Yeah, the delayed gratification is what <clears throat> we should be trying to do, because the mind reduces the amount of dopamine that you get from social media, and increases it to the work, because you feel good after finishing something and you can rest. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I know we will continue these conversations. We, we might not exhaust it now, but parents, you've heard on what these guys have said, and there's something that we can extend to support, help them so they can easily, nicely, safely navigate through uh, social media. I'd like us to, to jump to something else. Um, and this is about your uh, Pathfinder ring. Um, you guys, if you remember some amazing memory that you've had about your pathfindering journey, you could share it with us so that we can also relish on it. You want to start, Hope? Yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. So like I said, I haven't been in this church for so long. Hold but it closer to your mouth, please. Sorry. Like I said, I haven't been in this church for so long, just about like three years. But one of my very first um, Pathfinder memories in this church is, will be, always be one of my best ones. So it was like a social event for, I think it was, what's the Ranger class um, with my friends, because most of my friends in church are in my school, so it was to like waterfront, the park, like the water park there, and it was just a social with people, some people I knew, and I got to make a bunch of new friends in this church, and after that, the next Saturday, I was able to like continue on the conversations I had with them and just make a lot of new friends in this church. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Lily? Um, I would say mine are also the social Sundays and the camps. They are very fun, very educative, and very, you build lifetime friends from all that. Because like my friends now, I see us in 20 years doing something, and yeah. Okay, thank you. Mabel? Yeah, I share the same perspective, how the most memorable part about Pathfinders is the friends you make, the experiences you share with those friends you make. 
which makes it all fun and memorable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what I hear from this side really is the connections that they form, that the club is not just about the curriculum, going through the curriculum, but the bonds that they, they make while they are in the clubs, which is really amazing. I like to come to this left side and start with Dylan, then I'll hear George. One of the most best memories I've ever had is a campori for last year. When we went, our tent was jam-packed with fun. We'd never sleep. We were ever up and down. And sincerely, we made trouble for the teachers, but it was, <laughs> it was kind of like worth it, and I won't forget that day. Yeah, in other words, you... You relish in the memory that you trouble the teachers, isn't yes. it? Yes. That must have been fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We hear you, Dylan. Uh, pathfinding is very fun because you get to do it with friends. And just the fact that you're staying with them, talking to them, doing an honor with them in class, going for camps with them, social Sundays and all, makes me want to come back to Pathfinder afternoons or participates in on the World Pathfinder Day. Right. Thank you so much. Now, you guys know you are in your prime age. Teenage is the prime age. In the development of the child, there are two periods in their development. Number one is two to three years. No wonder you guys call children terrible too. You need to shift calling them terrible too and calling them terrific too. It's because they're making connection to the world. And that is why they seem to be all over. So two and three years. The next age, it goes to a plateau. The next age is this age, the age of teenage. They have amazing potential. And I'd like to ask you guys if you see any opportunities for you to actually evangelize as young as you are. Do you see any opportunities? Uh, have you been able, you can give us a life example or experience where you've been able to actually evangelize? Okay, I'll start with George, then we go like this. Uh, so I go to this school where a lot of the people come to this church. And because of that, other people feel like they, they can come here. It's easier for them because we are many that go to Brayside and, go to, and come to this church. So other people start coming slowly and the community is great. That's good. Uh, is there anything that you said to them or it was just by influence, by your conduct? Did you actually welcome them or they just saw you and decided to come? Uh, so during a conversation, maybe they ask, uh, over, the, over the weekend, what did you do? I say I went to church. Who was there? Then I tell them this and these people. And sometimes they come to visit and actually a few of them have stayed. Wow, that's really good. That's impactful. Yeah, Dylan? I've ever evangelized to some, that one person in our class. He's, he's not a believer of Christ. So when I told him about the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I told him what we do, who we are, and how we impact people's lives. So we've been chatting lately using our devices, and he told me there's a Seventh-day Adventist Church around his area. So recently, when we finished chatting, he told his parents about it, and he said that he'll be going to that Seventh-day church. Wow. Can we say amen to Dylan? That's, that's, that's really good. Continue the conversation. And if, if you need any support, you know there are moments when you reach and you don't know what else to tell them, you can reach out to any of these adults who can support in that. But that's really good. Relational evangelism. I like that. Yeah, next Okay, so I'm going to pick up on what to George said, because I go to a school where a lot of people are in this church. Um, there was a situation, I don't know if you remember, around like March, there were two girls, four girls here that were in my school, and they're not SDAs, they're Catholic, and they came here during VBS to just experience the SDA lifestyle. So because I went to their school, I was able to like... Um, spread the gospel to them, and they were able to feel comfortable in our church, and... I think up to now they still like, like, practice some of our SD like rituals. Oh, that's really good. I mean, I like that. Yes. Um, it's oh, it's a mutual friend, me, Hope, and Mabel have. So she like there was a time we had a camp back in like I think 2021. 
it was during COVID, so it was like at Mabel's place, and the girl is her neighbor. So she came and she experienced, and she was like, wow. Like she said, in their church, they really have activities. So she she started coming regularly, uh, yeah, I would say. And she really wanted to join the church, and she even came for camp meeting. Wow. So like, yeah. That's really good. Yes? Um, normally in our school, we have events that happen on Saturday. So we can have like tournaments for sports, which I really would wish to participate in. But I understand that it's Sabbath. And so I choose to opt out. And sometimes my friends ask me, like, why I don't do anything on Saturday? And I explain to them, oh, it's Sabbath. And we have to rest and think about God and, you know, do godly things. So in the process, I hope that maybe a few hearts have been reached in school from the people I've explained to. And I hope it has evangelized. But, yeah, I feel like that's how... I yeah, I, I think taking that stand, Mabel, in itself is evangelism of sorts because they will keep asking those questions and one day they might want to ask about your church. So continue that stand and, and do, not, do not budge. Okay, that's what I would say. I'm going to ask the last two questions. We're almost done. Um, this, this first one will be more difficult, I think, and then the last one will be easier. So the more difficult one is about what would you like to see? What will be your ideal relationship with your parents? Um, teenagers at a given moment struggle with uh, parent-teenage relationships. I would like you to highlight if you see it as a problem or if not, what should be the ideal relationship that teenagers need to have with their parents? I think that's a, that's a good topic to talk about. I will, I'm going to start with Mabel and then come this way around. <laughs> um, the relationship I'd like to see with my parents? Yes. Or, par generally, all the parents and their teenagers. Uh, well, the relationship... I have with my parents, I feel is the one I like because it's an open relationship where we are encouraged to speak our thoughts. If there's something we have a problem with, we go to them and say. They encourage us not to be scared of telling them anything, which I feel like makes life easier because we don't have to hold in anything and struggle with our problems on our own. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's the relationship that... And that's what you like replicated in every other family, isn't it? Yeah. Open relationship. That's, that's really good. Lily, would you like to add anything to that? Um, yes. Um, I have a really open relationship with my parents. Like, it's like one of those relationships where I feel like, yes, sometimes they're my friend, and yes, sometimes they're my parents. But like, if you asked me like a week ago, I would say I want to have the party parents, the ones that say, hey, go out, go out. Lily, what are you doing home? <laughs> but um, the more I grow, the more I realize there's a, there's a boundary they set, and for my own good. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the relationship, I think, that like most teenagers would like to have with their parents is maybe like a relationship where they feel like understood, and there's a lot of communication mm -hmm. where they, like, they can say their feelings, and they're understood, and maybe their parents can be able to relate to them in, on a certain level. Okay, so understanding. Um, to take you to task just a little hope is to, to help me understand how you want parents to understand you because that, that's the bit I want you to unpack. You want understood, but how do you like to be understood or how would you like the parents to come to your level to understand you? You can give a scenario, you can give an example uh, that will help all these people to understand how to come to your level. Okay, so for example, maybe like let's say somebody wants to like, just using on what Lily said, maybe somebody wants to go out to their friends, maybe they can understand that, or no, sorry, let me give another example. Maybe somebody, like for example, I 
in my school there's a lot of trips, international trips, and maybe somebody, like I, my parents, my dad specifically likes to think that it's only because I like traveling and I like going and seeing a lot of places, but maybe they can understand that it's also because it's for my benefit, like academically, and also because I get to make a lot of new experiences and memories. So maybe they can understand that just because they them themselves personally don't experience the trips I'm going on doesn't mean that it's not beneficial. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dylan. According to me, the relationship we should have in a, with our parents in our age set is usually open. We either disagree to agree or agree to disagree to one or two things. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yes. I like that, Judge. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> the ideal relationship with your parents is almost unobtainable if you can't talk to them. Mm. Parents, you need to be open to talk to. And I'm not just saying this because I've had past experiences. It's because sometimes all you need to do is listen to your child because you don't know what they're going through until you've stepped in their shoes. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. Someone here in class, and I'm, so I, I'm maybe in class, and I haven't finished my work. So instead of the teacher shouting at me, they should ask why I'm not able to do my work. Maybe I've been, maybe I've been having a bad day. Maybe I just um, I'm tired or something like that. So talking is the best way to obtain a two-sided relationship because love does not go one way. Are you uh, you guys can say in unison? Are you guys free when engaged to to open up to adults to the adult world? You can say yes or no. Not all adults. Not okay. all adults in my life, but I feel like the most important ones, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Because that's, that's very important because the, the, adult, the adult world could be engaging, but you guys block. So if you're blocking, then they're not getting access to your worldview and see what, uh, what you're thinking about. So I'd I'd like you to help me understand if you're, if you're open to conversation, if you can open up to suggestions if you can be vulnerable to the adult world so that's something that i like one or two of you to to tell me yes george yes i am open to talking to adults because most of the time i'm calm and composed but when i'm not then i should stay away because sometimes what i say is not the best thing to say but when I'm cool, calm, and relaxed, it's easy to talk to them because we're able to understand each other. Okay. Anybody would like to add anything to that? Um, I think um, it depends, honestly. There are some situations where, um, yes, I'm open to talking to them, but we, don't, we come to a point of compromise and um, we, we don't understand each other, but we, we get each other's views. Meaning, I will sit here and listen to my parents and be like, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. But me, I feel like, and then we come to a compromise where both our, our thoughts yeah, and wishes have been like, Get at four. yeah. Okay, I, I hear you. Yeah, Hope. Um, I feel like mainly, just like adults in general, mainly I can talk to like my sister because, yes, yeah, she's an adult, but she also is like, kind of relates to me because she's not that, old yet she's like kind of young and she understands what I go through and maybe sometimes she can like um translate kind of translate to what I'm going through to my parents and kind of make them or help them understand what I go through yeah okay thank you anybody else or we're done with that all right yeah I'm usually open to my parents tell them what is either disturbing me emotionally physically Spiritually, it's usually rarely. Those two mostly disturb me. <laughs> right. So now, I tell people I trust. I don't just tell anyone so that I don't become ah. the topic of the day. Mm -hmm. And when I'm open, I describe what is disturbing me okay. and what I really don't want. What I'm picking from you is trust, isn't it? So I think to, to us adults, what the students need to get is trust. Once they gain our trust then they can open up to anything. Right, Whew. guys, there could be more things that we could have spoken about, but I'd like to bring this to a close. What I'd like you to tell me, now that you've told me you're in school, I'd like you to tell us what do you see of yourself? Do you have, beyond school, 
what do you see yourselves becoming? It will be good to share. And if I have this conversation with you, maybe in five, six years, we'll revise and see if you've achieved that or not. So what will you be like to become George in, in the future? And will that help you in your own imagination to serve God in that capacity? Um, well, my future career is not... Okay, it's a lawyer, and lawyers lie a lot. But <laughs> lawyers lie a lot, but I'm gonna I see be, I see eyes popping up somewhere there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be a truthful lawyer so so that the Lord will protect me and guide me in my cases. And that will help me as I'm good at it's it's something I can do easily because I'm very good at public speaking. I'm not afraid to speak out my mind and what I say is usually factually based. Amen. May God help you realize that. Amen. Amen. Dylan? My future ambitions are being a pilot. Amen. So, Pastor Kairiba kinyambia to the US, ni free. So, I'll, I'll be that good pilot. Yeah. And by God's grace, my plane won't crash. All right. Amen. 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 Hope. Um, I also want to go into law, but more of the side of representation of people who can't use their own voices, or maybe like children. Or Advocacy. Like, yeah, so stuff like that. So um, maybe I can use that to proclaim for people who like they feel like they're in a rough situation, and maybe they can see God's grace through me, and they can understand how God loves them through my work. Amen, amen, amen. Um, I want to be anything that people argue, because I like arguing. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But like, I would love to be a diplomat and to travel, to explore other countries, to help other people, and to like be in a situation where I can speak freely. And, to, um, and I think that has a lot to do with evangelists, because you see, um, I can travel to places where people don't know God, and I can speak to them, and they will listen, so yeah. That's really good, thank you. Lily, yeah. Well, when I grow up, I would like to be an architect. So maybe in the realm of architecture, I could design maybe churches or children's homes, you know, like Christian children home, children's homes where um, their, Christ, their spiritual life would be encouraged. Mm. Uh, yeah, I that's think good. So. It's good that you guys have shared part of your life and the ambitions that you have. Uh, they keep shifting depending on circumstances, but it's good that you have that in your mind, uh, that you're working towards them. And I pray lo- really that God will bring that to, to fruition. Um, thank you so much for really spending your time with us. And I'd like you to. I would like you now to prepare your parting shots. Anything, the experience you've had here, if this conversation has been good to you, or anything that you'd like to say to your fellow Pathfinders. But I'd like to see if any of you have one question or two questions for this panel, and then they can give their parting shots, and then we finish. You guys can raise your hand. Anybody? Anybody would like to ask a question? Anybody? Okay. Yeah, there's a hand there. Please come close. Come, come, come. Uh, any other hand? We'll, we'll just take the questions, one or two. They can answer and then we'll be done. Uh, all the mics are up front here. Two, two questions. Because all the mics are here, we'd like you to come close, ask them, and then they can answer. Yeah, Mama Peter, you can ask. And then, uh, is, that, uh, is that Sydney or? Yeah. Haley, come around. Mine is not a question, but just to thank you for being very vulnerable with us. Yeah. Um, we are many parents here who are now parenting teens, and when you bring up a program like this, it really helps us because we are learning a lot from you. Mm-hmm. So let's have more interactive sessions with you to also help us manage our children well. Amen. Amen. That's really good. You can give Haley. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Um, my question is, you talked about negative peer pressure. What if like, it was too much, then like, you had to do whatever they were telling you to do? Okay, so how you bounce back from, from the influence? That's a really good question, Haley. Yeah, and I think, Hope, you can address that. Okay, yeah. So there's this show I watch called Suits, and this guy, Nate, says, 
if you have a gun to your head, there are always a hundred other options. You don't always have to like give in to the peer pressure, but just because you have doesn't mean you can't get yourself out of it. You can either explain your situation if you get in trouble with like your parents or your teachers or a guardian, you can explain the situation, maybe they'll understand where you're coming from. You can, if you're not caught, you can not repeat the situation and you can, maybe you can positively peer pressure your friend into not doing such a thing or like turning from their ways. Okay, yeah. all right. Uh, George? So if you're in too deep and there's no way of turning back, just pray to the Lord. He is the one who is going to set your path He's the one who's going to tell you how to come out of here. Maybe fake an injury or fake fainting so that they can come help you. Uh, so, yeah, just pray to the Lord and he will find a way. All right. Anybody else? Or would you like me to wrap it up? I think, uh, Haley, thanks for asking that question. Uh, what, what we ride on is the love of God. Like, we will never go too far beyond the reach of God's love. And so even when we fall into pits, God has a way of bringing us back. And so if we cry to him, he can, he can always reclaim us. So we'll, we should never get into a pity party, something I call pity party, where we feel so helpless because God's hand is always at stretch to bring us back. Thank you, Haley. Yeah? Uh, yes, uh, that could be the last one. Uh, George, if you'd like to pass that mic. Um, for me, personally, yeah. like, I don't have that kind of really, it's not bad, but a really close relationship with my mom. Mm -hmm. She's just that she doesn't set to boundaries. Right. Like, for me, like, I'm, I'm doing my own stuff, and then mm -hmm. she just chop up my, my blanco, <laughs> just like, and then she doesn't close it. Okay. And then, she, she's putting, like... My school, yeah. I'm a candidate. Yes. And the last year's results, they did so well. Right. Now my mom also wants me to do very well. Okay. And me, I don't want to do, I want to get like an average mark that just, it's okay, I do, can go to the do next. Do you have a particular level. reason why you have to be average and not up there if you have the potential? I don't have the potential to be. You don't have <laughs> <laughs> When I look at you, I see potential. So you will continue, you will continue the conversation. Yeah. But when I look at you, I see a brilliant, amazing lady. So I, will, I would like to, to say we'll never limit God. What God can do with us is just so outstanding. But you can continue uh, with um, your question or your like, comment. Do you, any of you, like, struggle with having, like, your parents to set boundaries, like, to you? Like, I hear what you're saying, uh, over expectation from parents especially in terms of academic performance? Is that the question? Do any of you, yes, Lily, please answer that question. So um, I wouldn't say these are set boundary, but I have siblings and all my siblings are overachievers. Like they get scholarships, they do everything. So me as a person who just wants to be low key, um, <laughs> like sometimes it's hard, but I feel like the more I speak to them and I tell them, oh, Yes, I wouldn't be like my siblings. I wouldn't reach a certain level, but I will try and do the best I can. Yeah. And I under they honestly, every parent will understand that once you do the best, they're happy for you. Amen. Like no matter how much you think, like your parents are like not happy, they are very happy for you that you did your best and you tried your hardest. So once you do that and you speak to your mom about it, I think, I think it will become easier. Yeah. yeah. I think she, she needs assurance that she's the best and you can achieve the best. Everybody that we read about in the Bible, Daniel, everybody, Joseph, they went to the zenith of achievement. So I'm looking at you and seeing a brilliant girl, you will achieve much, much more than you feel or think. Then number two, I'm going to speak to the parents about over-expectation. It is what has caused a lot of now what we call the... This, the, the, we call it teenage depression. It has moved from where it used to be a couple of years ago, which was 18. It's now on 12. Average of 12-year-olds having depression. One of the reasons is over-expectation, academic over-expectation of parents to children. And so I'd like us to set very, very realistic expectation to our children. 
so that we're not stressing them out. Nobody ever said that if you score a C, it, you will not be an important person in life. But if we lead our children and support them, they will achieve both academically and also in other spheres of life. That's what I'll say. But thank you so much for bringing that, that thought up. All right. Maybe we'll start with you and finish with George on our final thoughts. So, um, my parting shot is as much as we children want our parents to listen to us and understand us, we too should listen to them and try to see their perspective because as a child, we may want to like go out, have fun, not come home early, like come home late. And when they put down rules that tell us like that's not acceptable, you have to come home at a certain time, you can't do this. It's because they may see things and know things that we don't know right now because we're busy just looking for fun. And I feel like we should try listen to them and just understand them so that our relationships may not have that much strife and we can understand each other. Amen. That's a yeah. really good point. Thank you so much. Um, my part in short is that um, overall our parents want the best for us and um, they, will, they will literally do anything to see us happy, although we may not see it as teenagers. I think once we sit down and talk to them and have a conversation with them, we realize they just want the best for us and they're trying their best to do, to like create opportunities for us and do a lot. So if we just listen and understand and we come to a conclusion as parents and, um, as parents and kids, we'll have a very healthy relationship. Thank you, that's good, yeah. Um, my part in short strays away from the topic of like parent, parent and child relationships. It's more about teenagers' relationships with God. So I think that as a teenager, you shouldn't let pressure, like peer pressure and social media, take away God from you. You shouldn't let it come in between you and God. And you should always remember your end goal, which is heaven. You should always remember that you're on this earth. God put you on this earth so that you could do his work and that you could become closer to him. So my closing remarks is just to remember that your, your number one goal on this earth is for you and God to become like this. Amen. Amen. Yes. As one of the questions was brought up for over expectations, when your parents set up that expectation that they want you to get to and you fail to get there, and when you're having that talk with them, they criticize you in a way they don't know they're criticizing you, but you feel criticized. So whenever you're talking to them, you feel like that goal that they've set for you is Too something huge. you can get, but you can't just get it all the way. There's some kind of progressive way you'll get to it. Because they might tell you, back when I was in this class or that class, I used to get this or that. But to say to parents, that was you and this is us. <laughs> so please, you should not tell us what you got, but you should tell us what you did to get there. And what you did be something that we do, but you should add more into it. Amen. That's really good. That's really good, Dylan. I don't need to add anything to that. <laughs> what Dylan has said is very important. Uh, so parents, please listen to your children. Children, obey your parents. It's said in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, we also need to understand that children are developing and growing, and we may not know everything. And parents also need to understand that they can also make mistakes. My mom has just walked in. <laughs> 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 so parents need to also understand that they can also make mistakes and when they do they say sorry, say sorry. yeah it's simple as that say sorry please um, yeah I feel like we've just cracked the surface we need another conversation hopefully teacher Fred, teacher Linda you'll give us another time to have conversation let me read uh, pro, uh, Psalm 144 verse 12 then we can have out of prayer so, uh, uh, the 144th Psalm, verse 12 says, Let our sons in their youth be as grown-up plants, and our daughters as corner pillars, fashioned as for a palace. I'll repeat. 
Let our sons in their youth be as grown-up plants and our daughters as corner pillars fashioned as for a palace. May all our children prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we rise for a word of prayer? Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God who is in heaven, glory and honor be unto your holy name. We thank you so much for these Sabbath hours. We thank you for gathering all of us here and even to our audience online. We thank you that you have given us time to talk about real issues that affect the pathfinders. And thank you because you give us this day so that we can do this. Celebrate and commemorate the spirit of pathfindering. I want to thank you so much for all these teenagers who came up front here. And I want to pray for their success first in their spiritual life and also in their academic pursuits and in their social lives. I pray for their peers, both in the Pathfinder and the Adventurers groups, that you'll bless each of them indeed. I pray that you bless our families, you bless our parents. I pray that you bless all the people around us, our friends, and everybody around our influence. Please may you forgive us our sins where we did not put these things right. May you forgive us. And for the little seed that we've sowed out there, I pray that it should blossom and become bountiful in harvest. And Lord, in the coming programs, I pray that you'll be with us as we start our family uh, week of prayer. I pray that you'll rekindle our hearts, you'll rekindle our uh, perspectives about our parent and children relationships. This is our prayer. We ask trusting in Jesus' name. Amen.